Shalom, Shalom. Before I start, I want to give all honors and glories and praises to Yahweh Bahashim Yahushai, Bahashim Yahweh Kakodash, Yahweh, which is the one true name of the Heavenly Father, Yahweh Shai, who the world only calls Jesus Christ, but his one true name is Yahweh Shai. Double honors to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone, who will well teach well, because those are the men who I learned this truth from through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bahashim Yahushai. Peace, blessings, salutations to the whole full elect. And shalom to you, sincere brothers scattered abroad, pushing forth this word in truth and sincerity. I am the brother Mashiach Arazaka from the servants of Yahweh Wai Yahweh Shai Camp, Las Vegas, Nevada branch. And pretty much in this lesson, it's going to be titled as The reason we're at the bottom today is because we broke the old covenant. We're at the bottom today because we broke the old covenant. Something like that. I might title it something else, but that's pretty much what we're going into. We're at the bottom because we didn't keep the law, statutes, and commandments. We broke the old covenant. So this is a quick hit. This is uh, 1 Kings 17 and verse 7. We're going to start at verse 7. Lord willing, this lesson is edifying. Because the Israelites, right, we sin before our power in the eyes of our Lord. Right? We broke the old covenant. Not keeping the law, statutes, and commandments. We followed the way of the heathen. And we started to become like the heathen. So the Lord gave us over to the heathen nations as a punishment. This is 1 Kings 17 and 7. Lord willing, this lesson is edifying. This is 2 Kings 17 and 7. Salakia. It says, For so it was that the children of Israel had sinned against the Lord their power. See, we sin against the Lord our power. We sinned in the eyes of the Lord. It says, Which had brought them up out of the land of Egypt from under the hand of Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and had feared other gods. See, the Lord delivered us out of the hands of these Hamites. Because the Egyptian is a Hamite. Egypt. Right? That's where the uh, Hamites dwell. We were in a Hamite captivity under the Egyptians. Which are the Hamites. Alright? Which are Africans. Because that's what an Egyptian is. An Egyptian is an African. A Hamite. It is not an Arab. Arab is Ishmaelites. Those are the Arabs today. Those are the Ishmaelites. They're descendants of Ishmael. You know, because you got a lot of these um, Arabs claiming to be Egyptian, but you guys are not Egyptian. An Egyptian is a Hamite, which is an African. You are not an African. You are an Arab. All right. An Arab is an Ishmaelite. Y'all descendants of Ishmael. It says, from under the hand of Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and had feared other gods. Right. And that's what our people did. They started to walk after the way of the heathen, the heathen nations. Verse 8, it says, and walked in the statutes of the heathen. See, our people, which are you so-called Negroes, Hispanics, Native American Indians, we sinned in the eyes of our Lord. That's why we're at the bottom today, because we followed the way of the heathen. And the scripture told us not to. The Lord told us not to, but we did it anyway. It says, and walked in the statutes of the heathen, whom the Lord cast out from before the children of Israel and of the kings of Israel. Which they had made. See, we started to follow the way of the heathen. Verse 9. And the Lord of Israel did secretly those things that were not right against the Lord their power. And they built them high places in all their cities from the tower of the watchmen to the fenced city. Verse 10. And they set up, they set, it says, and, and they set them up images and groves in every high hill and under every green tree. Verse 11. And it says, and there they burnt incense in all the high places, as did the heathen, whom the Lord carried away before them, and wrought wicked things to provoke the Lord to anger. See, we started following the way of the heathen. We start mingling amongst the heathen. And the scriptures mention that in Psalms 106. All right, it says, they, it says, Thou hast mingled among the heathen and learnt his works. So we mingled amongst the heathen nations, which the Lord forbid us to do. And we did it anyway. So we, we provoked our Lord to anger mingling amongst the heathen and following their works you know trying to be like the heathen and that's what was our downfall as a people it says for they served idols see the nation of israel they did that they started worshiping other gods whereof the lord has said unto them ye shall not do this thing see so we were commanded not to follow the way of the heathen and we did it anyway verse 13 yet the lord testified against israel and against judah See, Israel is the is the northern kingdom, and Judah is the southern kingdom. 
Judah consists of the three tribes, which is Judah, Benjamin, and Levi. And you have Israel, which is the northern kingdom, which consists of the rest of the tribes. All right. It says by all the prophets and by all the seers, a seer is a prophet. That's what a seer is. A seer is a prophet. Right. It says, and by all the seers saying, turn ye from your evil ways. See, the Lord set up men, prophets to direct us into the right direction. And they were giving them the they were giving us the warning and we didn't take heed. Our people, we didn't take heed to it. It says, turn ye from your evil ways and keep. See, this is what the Lord was saying. And keep my commandments and my statutes. Right. According to all the law, which I commanded your fathers. And which I set to you by my servants, the prophets, because the Lord speaks to his men. The Lord always speaks to his prophets. So the Lord was telling us to repent. He was telling us not to keep following the way of the heathen. Right. And we didn't do it. Verse 14. Now, withstanding, they would not hear. See, we didn't hearken onto the law, statutes and commandments. And we didn't hearken on to the Lord. We weren't obedient to the Lord. It says, but harden their necks like to the neck of their fathers that did not believe in the Lord, their power. Verse 15, and they rejected his statutes. See, we disobeyed the heavenly father, rejected his statutes and his covenants and his covenant that he made with their father. See, we broke the old covenant. We didn't keep the law, statutes and commandments. It says in his testimonies, see, we didn't take heed to our Lord, which he testified against them. And they followed vanity. This is us as a people. This is what we did. This is why we're at the bottom today. It says testified against them and they followed vanity and profane vain and went after the heathen that were around about them. So we forsaken our power to follow the way of the heathen. We started worshiping the heathen gods. We started being like the heathen. We started mimicking after the heathen. It says concerning whom the Lord had charged them. That they should not do like them. The Lord told us not to not to defile ourselves, right? When you go to Leviticus, the 18th chapter, and you read verse 18 and 24, right? And also 18 and 30, the Lord says, Defile not yourselves in, for the heathen are cast out, which are from among you. So the Lord didn't want us being like the heathen, and we did it anyway. We forsaken the Lord to follow the way of the heathen. Verse 16, and this is what is leading is leading into the punishment which the Lord did to us as a people. This is why we're at the bottom today, because we didn't take heed to the Lord's instructions. Verse 16, and they left all the commandments of the Lord, their power. See, this is what we did and made them multi, molten images. So we started worshiping other gods. We started bringing those uh, idols into Jerusalem and started worshiping them and started doing all that. Right. And it says even two calves and made a, a made a grove and worship all the hosts of heaven and serve Baal. See that Baal is a is a is a is a heathen deity. Right? It's a made up, it's a false deity. And that's what we did as a people. We forsaken the Lord and we started worshiping idols. So that provoked provoked the Lord to anger and he gave us over to the heathen. This is it right here, verse 17. And they caused their sons and their daughters to pass through the fire and use divinations and enchantments and sold themselves to do evil in the sight of the Lord to provoke, provoke him to anger. See, we provoked the, our power to anger. Verse 34, the Lord was very angry with Israel. See, he was very angry with Israel. Israel is the northern kingdom. It says, therefore, the Lord was very angry with Israel, which was the northern kingdom. We fell first and removed them out of his sight. There was none left but but. But the tribe of Judah only Judah as its capital is considered the southern kingdom. That's Judah, which was Judah, Benjamin and Levi That's a southern kingdom. The northern kingdom fell first. The Lord gave us over to the Assyrians. When you read up above this precept, going back to verse one, it shows it shows uh, it mentions the northern kingdom going into servitude to the Assyrians, which is King Balsazar. That was a King Balsazar, no, King Salmonizer, Salaka, King Salmonizer. If I'm saying his name right, he was an Assyrian uh, king, King Salmonizer, which you can read in 2nd Edris, the 13th chapter. And it says, see, so the Lord removed the northern kingdom out of his sight. So the tribe of Judah, which is considered of his capital as the southern kingdom, that was left. The northern kingdom fell first, right? That's why it says, but the tribe of Judah only. So Judah was only left. Verse nine, verse 19, also Judah kept not the commandments of the Lord their power. See, Judah didn't keep the commandments either. They broke the old covenant. 
it says, but walked in the statutes of Israel, which they made. See, so the North, the Southern kingdom was following like the way of the Northern kingdom was, which was following the way of the heathen, worshiping other gods, doing all those things, doing things, breaking the laws, rebelling against the heavenly father. Verse 20, and the Lord rejected all the seed of Israel. See, so the Lord rejected all of Israel and afflicted them and delivered them and delivered them into the hands of the spoilers. Who are the spoilers? The 17 heathen nations. So the Lord gave us to the heathen because we started following the way of the heathen. So the Lord was like, okay, you're going to follow the heathen. I'm going to give you to the heathen. So now the Lord dispersed us, which was scattered. And we're scattered amongst the 17 heathen nations. And we are oppressed today. And the heathens are ruling over us. So I'm going to end it with this. And then we're going to hop into the Deuteronomy to prove what I'm saying. Because it's always good to prove all things. Verse 20. And the Lord rejected all the seed of Israel and afflicted them. And delivered them into the hand of the spoilers, which are the 17 heathen nations. Because the 17 heathen nations are ruling over us today. It says, until he had cast them out of his sight. See, so the Lord, he gave us to the heathen nations because we didn't keep the law, statutes, and commandments. And when you go to Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter, this was the reward. From verse 1 all the way down to third, verse 14, it went into the reward on what, was, what would have been given to us if we would keep the laws. So this was the blessing that... If we would have kept the laws, this is what the Lord would have did for us. Verse 28, verse 13, Deuteronomy 28, 13. And the Lord shall make thee the head and not the tail. See, if we were to keep the laws, statutes, and commandments, we'd have been on top to this very day now. We wouldn't be serving the so-called white man and these 17 heathen nations. We'd have been above them. We are above them now, but we're suffering, we're suffering a temporal punishment, which when the Lord makes his second coming and he comes back, we're going to rule. This is why... Esau's rulership, which is a so-called white man, is falling beneath his feet because the Lord is is coming and it's, it, the prophecies are being fulfilled daily and Esau's rulership is falling beneath his feet and he don't want to let it go, but he's, he's going to lose his kingdom. Yahweh Shai is going to come back and he's going to set his kingdom on the planet earth and the elect is going to be the head again. The elect of the nation of Israel, we're going to be the head and the heathen nations are going to be at the bottom and the Lord shall make thee the head, see and not the tail. So this was a prophecy for us. If we didn't have the laws, we'd have been at the head right now. We wouldn't be serving nobody. It says, and not the tail. There wouldn't have been no such thing as, as slavery and, and captivity if we would obey the Lord, but we didn't obey him. It says, and not the tail, and thou shalt be above only. See, we would have been above only. It says, and thou shalt not be beneath. We wouldn't be beneath no one today. If thou, it says, if that thou hearken unto the commandments of the Lord Thy power. That was the law statute. That was the old covenant, keeping the law, statutes, and commandments, which we didn't do, which I command thee this day to observe and to do them. See, so that would have been our reward if we would have stayed serving the Lord. But nope, we didn't do that. So this was the punishment. Reading Second Kings the 17th chapter, right? We started worshiping idols and following the way of the heathen and walking in the statutes and the way of the heathen and not our power. So the Lord gave us unto the spoil, right? This is the curse. Deuteronomy 28 and 44. He shall lead thee, talking about the heathen nations, and thou shalt not lend to him. He shall be the head, talking about the heathen nations, and thou shalt be the tail. So we're at the bottom today. The heathen nations are above us, and we're at the bottom. We working for the heathen. The heathen's supposed to be working for us, but we working for the heathen. We get our clothes, our food resources, anything you think of, we get them from the heathen nations. We got to go to the heathen for everything. That's a temporal punishment. Jeremiah 17 and 4, and thou even thyself shall discontinue from thine heritage that I gave thee. See, so our heritage was, was, was stricken from us. It was taken from us. Why? Because we were disobedient as a people. So number one, our land was taken from us. Our heritage was taken from us. Our language was taken from us. Our nationality was even taken from us. Esau took in all that from us. But now the Lord has given it back to us. Now we're starting to... You know, the Lord is waking us up. We're knowing who we are. We're knowing who we come from. We're knowing who our forefathers are in the scriptures. We know that the Bible is our heritage. And it's not just a religious book. It's our heritage. It's our history. We understanding that we're the Israelites. We're knowing that our heritage and our high holy days. And we're separating ourselves from the ways that we learned of this world of Esau's, which was his philosophies. Now we've woken up from that. So we're no longer embedded in that. The Lord discontinued us from our heritage. But now the Lord has given it back to us. It says, I gave thee 
And I will cause thee to serve thine enemies in a land which thou knowest not. That's a curse upon us for being disobedient. It says, for ye have kindled a fire in my anger which shall burn forever. See? So there you go. The reason why we're at the bottom today was the reason why we're at the bottom today is because we did not keep the law, statutes, and commandments, and we followed the way of the heathen. Due to that, that was our punishment, and we're still in a temporal punishment. But hey, the Lord is going to come back, and He's going to put everything back into its rightful estate, its rightful order, how it originally was before to begin with. But right now, we're in a temporal punishment, and the reason we're at the bottom today is because we broke the old covenant. Actually. I want to add one more precept because I want to bring in proving you that the new covenant, which we're not in yet, is going to come. But we're not in a new covenant yet. And actually, I want to get that out. We're at the bottom now, but when the Lord come back, we're going to be at the top. And this is going into the new covenant. The new covenant, we're not in a new covenant yet. The new covenant is going to be in the kingdom of heaven. We're going to get this new covenant. It says, for if the first covenant had been faultless, we broke the old covenant. That was the first covenant. We didn't keep the law, statutes, and commandments. That's why it says, For if that first covenant had been faultless, then should no place have been sought for the second. See? Because the, the new covenant that's coming is going to be in the kingdom of heaven. Verse 8. For finding fault with them, he saith, Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel, which is the northern kingdom, and with the house of Judah, which is the southern kingdom. Because when King Solomon sinned, the Lord split the kingdoms into two kingdoms. You had the southern kingdom and you had the northern kingdom. Verse 9, it says, Not according to the covenant that I had made with their fathers the day when I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt. That was the first covenant. That was the covenant that we broke. So that's why we're at the bottom today. Right? It says, Because they continued not in my covenant. See? And I regarded them not, saith the Lord. So there you go. It's telling you. Verse 10, it says, For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel, right? After those days, saith the Lord, I will put my laws into their mind. Because the elect, when the Lord uh, sealed the elect, when the elect is sealed, they, they're going to be beamed up. They're going to be changed, right? The scriptures say in 1 Corinthians 15, we're going to be changed. So the elect is going to have the laws written in them. Is it going to be no more looking at the back of ingredients and, you know, teaching people to keep the laws and trying to remember what's in food? And we ain't going to be doing none of that. The law is going to be written in us and we're going to be able to keep the laws perfectly. We ain't going to be breaking the laws and being wicked and things like that. Right. This is going to be in a new covenant. This is a future prophecy and write them in their hearts, meaning their minds. And I will be to them a power and they shall be to me a people. See, this is in the new covenant, which is going to be established in the kingdom. Verse 11. And they shall not teach every man his neighbor. Right. Teaching them. You're an Israelite, brother. Uh, numbers 1 and 18. You're an Israelite. Repent. You got to keep the laws as you command to the best of your ability. You had a faith, you know. Teaching them to keep the laws and teaching them the scriptures ain't going to be none of that. It's going to be written in them. They're already going to know. They're already going to know the name of the Lord. They're already going to know the protocols and the do's and don'ts. It's already going to be written in them. They're going to know already. That's going to be in the new covenant, and it, which is which is in the kingdom. It says, and every man is brother saying, know the Lord. They're already going to know the Lord. It's going to be written in them. It says, for all shall know me from the least to the greatest. It's going to be written in the elect. They're already going to know the Lord. We're already going to know the protocols. The same way we breathe in, air, breathe out, we're going to be able to keep the laws like that. Verse 12, it says, For I will be merciful to their right unrighteousness. I will be merciful to their unrighteousness because the Lord is going to forgive us. Right? And their sins and their iniquities will I remember no more because we're going to be a perfect people, a perfect being. In the new covenant, we're going to be a perfect being. That's going to be in the kingdom. We're going to have perfect bodies we ain't going to be sinning. We ain't going to be, bodies ain't going to be breaking. We ain't going to have damaged bodies. We're going to be at the top and we're going to have the heathen nation serving us. And that's in Obadiah, the first chapter as well. I can keep going. I can go to Obadiah, the first chapter where it says that the Israelites are going to possess their possessions, which are these heathen nations. You guys are ruling over us right now due to us of, of rebellion, of the Israelites of, of being rebellious. Being a stiff-necked, disobedient nation. So that's why we're in servitude to you. But if we wouldn't have did that and obeyed the Lord, we would have been at the top today. Verse 12, For I will be merciful to their unrighteousness and their sins and their iniquities will I remember no more. Right? Verse 13, It says, In that he saith a new covenant, which is reading the kingdom of heaven. Right? He hath made the first old, the old covenant, because we broke it. 
It says, now that which decayeth and waxeth old is ready to vanish away. See, so we broke the old covenant, but the new covenant is going to be established in the kingdom of heaven. And that's when we're going to be perfect. And we're going to be able to keep, we're going to be able to keep the laws perfectly. We're going to have perfect bodies. We're going to be incorruptible. We're going to go from corruptible to incorruptible, meaning not, not, not filthy, clean, right? And we're going to go from uh, uh, mortal to immortal, meaning un unable to die. We're going to have perfect bodies. That's all mentioned in 1 Corinthians, the 15th chapter. So again, you know, long story short, like I said before, we're at the bottom today because we did not keep the laws and statutes and commandments. We broke the old covenant. So Lord willing, this lesson was edifying. Till next time I say, Shalom.